Hello everybody, and welcome to Sparkle Dot. Today's gonna be kind of a chill episode, you know, I'm not in a good mood today, but you know, a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. I got integrity, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you, I got what it takes, I got the scruples, I got the wherewithal to be a man, a real life man, and I'm going to be that man today, so buckle your seatbelts and um, I, I, I was gonna try and swear. <laughs> But I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm a I'm a Christian now, so it's it's improper for me to sway. Now those Christians they look down on swearing, which I don't think is a problem. It it really it really implies that you know you got the scruples, you got the uh, the mindfulness to be aware of what other people around you want and think and feel. And if they don't want you to swear, you shouldn't be swearing at them, especially if you're going to be calling them things like retard. Now I watched a movie today called Flight of the Navigator. It was a Disney film, I believe. Uh, at least when I watched it, it had the little Disney startup logo animation, you know, um, where when you wish upon a star, it doesn't make a difference who you are, because everything your heart desires will come to you, and that's what they say, that's what the Disney, that's what, that's what Disney wants you to think. I don't know if it's true or not, but, you know, just holding out hope that, um, things will be okay just because you want them to be okay, it's a very, it's a very noble message, but I don't think it's an accurate one, I think it's important proper for Disney to be pushing these ideals on little children, you know, they they get these, they get these notions in the head that it's okay to, uh, you know, hold out hope that you'll have a good future with lots of money and a big dick and a hot wife, and then you'll move into a Ferrari. You'll live inside the Ferrari, but you'll also have a house. Uh, you could live in the house, but you wanted a summer house, but you can't afford a summer house, so what you do instead is you, um, you, you get the Ferrari and you live in there, and then you go during the summer, maybe during the weekend, you go into the house. Um, the, the Ferrari's parked inside of a garage, which is pretty nice. I mean, it's a regular garage. It's not anything fancy, but it's still pretty nice. It's not like it's not like you can knock on them for, you know, not trying. Because, I mean, I, you don't spend that much time in the garage. Why would, if they're going to build a fancy uh, mansion for you, why would you why would you live inside of the garage? That's insane. You're an insane person, let me tell you what. <laughs> Anyways, um... Going off of that, yeah, I watched this movie, Flight of the Navigator, it, I don't know if you've ever heard. Okay. Thanks, monkey. Thanks, monkey dance. Um, essentially, the plot is this this little this little shit shithead of a kid. It starts out with him whining about how his brother's a little pussy, and then he goes into the... Him and his brother decide they're going to go into the forest to fight each other. They're going <coughs> to take off their shirts and uh, beef up their muscles, and then they're going to flex, and then whoever kicks the other's ass gets to, um, uh... <clears throat> I was going to say something kind of inappropriate, but, uh, you know, I'll just say it anyways. Whoever kicks the other's ass gets to, um... That's not exactly what I was hoping would happen. Gets to mate with their own mother and create a new brother. That's... I don't know why that was where I was going to go with that first, but that's, you know, that's that's in poor taste. So, pretend I didn't say that, you know? Pretend I didn't say something in poor taste. Now I'll say something that is not in poor taste. Um, uh, Oreo... No, that's also in poor taste. They got these Oreo peeps now. They, they, they got, um... Oreo peeps. So it, it's an Oreo cookie. It's like a golden Oreo, and it's sandwiched between, uh, it's sandwiching, uh, this pink fluffy cream, uh, which is like, like peep fluff. And if that sounds disgusting to you, rest assured, it is disgusting. I heard rumors that, um, it was turning people's, uh, feces pink, just like the, the fluff itself. I don't know about that. I can't corroborate those claims, but I did try one and I wanted to throw up. I wanted to kill myself and, uh, I usually don't want to kill myself too often. Uh, it, it, you know, every once in a blue moon, we've all, we've all got a moment of weakness, you know. It's it's only human to want to uh, put a shotgun between your, uh, between... <laughs> Wait, how does that go? Put a sh Point a shotgun to the sky and put your face in between those two things. That's that's how it goes. That's also a Streetlight Manifesto reference for you, uh, for you, um... <clears throat> social retards who only listen to one band and never any other types of bands. Now, listen, I enjoy me some ska music. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Ska, you know, it's done some good things for music, and I found this out recently. I found out that ska music was actually, it predates reggae, I guess. I didn't know that that was true. I always assumed that, like, Bob Marley and shit like that influenced ska, because when I listen to the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, I'm like, wow, this is like a worse version of Bob Marley. That's exactly what I thought the first time I heard it. Um, <laughs> he's talking about the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones again. I'm a fucking moron. I don't listen to, to, back to my show very often because I think uh, a lot of the things that I say are stupid. And, you know, if you, you, you're feel, 
you feel free to agree with that. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to judge you for having an opinion. I will judge you if your opinion is uh, racist, but you know, other than that, I'm I'm not going to judge you for having an opinion. Speaking of racism, um, so sh- for the past, uh, like I guess two and a half months, Shia LaBeouf has been um performing this little project called He Will Not Divide Us, and what he's doing essentially is um. It started out, he was, he had a webcam somewhere in uh, New York, near some sort of, uh, museum somewhere, and he, people could just come up to it and be, like, they would chant into it like, a, like, fucking banshees, or like, it, it was, it was creepy, it was cultish, would be the term to describe what it was like. Um, these people would come up like zombies and just chant, he, he will not divide us, he will not divide us, he will not divide us, <laughs> He will not divide us. Yeah, that's how it would go. Um, so essentially, they started getting some people trolling them, which is, of course, just the natural reaction to anything on the internet that's getting a lot of attention. There's going to be people who want to, um, you know, fuck around with it, play games with it. And I don't, I, I can't blame these people because I'm completely the same way. I, you know, I've done my fair share of Rick Rollings in the past. Um, not, not to sound like a huge uh, fucking fag, but you know, I. I I, I've I've engaged in a meme or two, you know. It's it's only human to want to meme your best friends and coworkers. Not your coworkers so much they won't understand if you um pull a hilarious meme on them and they don't know, understand. They don't know what the meme is. They're not going to laugh. That's just they're not going to laugh at what you do. So I would recommend not pranking your coworkers with hilarious dank memes, like maybe photoshopping their head onto like the dog meme and be like. Maybe you, maybe you got a coworker who really likes um, Oreo fluff, and they eat that like every day, and it's disgusting. And then you Photoshop their head onto a dog meme, and be like, "Wow, much fluff! Uh, ten out of ten would not bang or something." I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what these memes are anymore. You know, back in my day, memeing was a classic thing that you would do. It wasn't something that you'd do for fun. It would be something that you would do just to fuck with people. And you know, as as far as I as far as I'm concerned, fucking with people. If it's done tastefully, is it's not a problem as long as you're not like doing anything at their financial exp- uh, expense or like killing any of their family members or maybe you know like taking their their mail and uh, um, putting it in someone else's mailbox. Here's a prank I always love to do, and uh, this is gonna this is gonna make me sound like a huge fag, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. Um, I used to in the dead of night, me and my friend would go out and we'd start. Um, We'd start banging, we'd start making out on um, people's front lawns in the dead of night, so that whenever, so that we could like point in at their uh, point at those people and be like, "Ha ha, someone had gay sex on your lawn." Um, that's actually a joke, uh, but <laughs> it wasn't a funny joke, but it was a joke. Um, no, what we would do is we would go into like, if someone had like a like a for sale sign on their house like they're gonna move or something we would take that sign and move it a couple houses down and put it in someone else's driveway and uh or or we would go into those like take one things where it's got like a little pamphlet on the house all the information all the floors bedrooms how many animals how many ghosts it's haunted by you know stuff like that you know stuff people are really concerned about when they're buying a house and we would just swap those around you know it uh, it, it sounds dumb and uh, you know, rest assured, it was dumb, but you know that's just what we like to do. We had we had fun. We were little boys who like to have fun, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think. Um, now, when you start like spray painting people's windows or um, uh, like like drawing swastikas on like burning swastikas into their their front lawn or something, stuff that stuff that could cost them money or a job or uh, their respect of the dearest friends and family neighbors and stuff like that, then then that's when that becomes a problem. Anyways, um... I was, so I was talking about... <laughs> that was very... Lo- Where am I? Okay, that's fine. That was a very long-winded uh, way for me to say that uh, people were pranking Shia LaBeouf's in his uh, He Will Not Divide Us campaign. So what he wound up doing was he moved, he moved it to... New Mexico or something, Santa Fe, I believe, and it got shut down again because people kept fucking with it. So what he did uh, just recently, this past week actually, he um, he moved it to an unknown location and pointed it, just pointed his 
webcam at a stationary flag that was blowing in the wind. Now, the fun part about this is that you'd think, well, if it's just a stationary camera of a flag blowing in the wind and all you can see is the sky, no one's ever going to find out where it is, so nobody can go troll his little uh, campaign. Well, that's where you'd be wrong. So so what happened was some some tricksters on 4chan, of all places, um, noticed that they could see planes... Uh, streaking across the sky, the day sky. So they got on flightradar.com, check it out, flightradar.com, and saw which flights were active and which directions they were headed, and then began to um, look for other planes that would come across the sky as well in the same location, and they were able to do this, and then they got to the point where they could predict whether or not a plane was going to show up on uh, the feed, and then they got to the point where they were accurate in their predictions. So they were able to figure out exactly where the the flag was just based off of, like, planes streaking across the sky. And, um, so somebody went there, and... I'm just gonna keep falling for the same fucking thing, aren't I? Okay, well, you know what, um... Let's end this episode here. I'll finish my story next episode. Thank you for watching. Bye. Mwah.